And we're in. All right, there we go. Capture age activated. Oh boy, here we go. Capture are. card Look activated. At Look we at this have beauty. Game. <laughs> oh boy. You can see uh, the entire base already. Yeah, so there we go. We get there eventually. Apologies for the delayed start, but we are now in. It is happening. D8 Baby against the Viper. And uh, we are using Capture Age. Oh boy. So this is a best of three for the round of 16 in the Europe West 1v1 stage for the Escape Champions League. And spawning to the west of the map in the yellow, it is the Viper. And he's going to be playing as the Vikings. Robo. Yeah, not really a sieve you would think of <laughs> to use on Regicide Fortress. Like no. Normally you want sieves with a good unique unit. You yeah. know, things like the Mines, the Spanish, I guess Berbers, they kind of fall into that category. They've got a pretty good unique unit in the Camel Archers, but Vikings, you can't use Berserks for raiding. They don't have a ranged attack. I guess they've got a decent eco, but you know, mm. every sieve has a decent eco when you're fully walled and you can just boom. Right. Yeah, it's a very, very strange choice. There's a lot mm. of sieves in this pool, which perhaps would have been better suited to this map. But Viper, in his classic yellow color, will be taking Vicky as sieve number one. His opponent, D8 Baby, on the opposite side of the map to the northeast, will be playing for Team Frantic and will be playing as the Berbers, which is a choice that I can see fitting into Regicide Fortress like sort of roles uh, much more easily. Um, obviously, the Camel Archer is very fast, very versatile, and oh, it looks like G8 Baby's having a little hard time getting that boar home. Um, she's having a hard time getting it through the hole in the wall there, but I think this time after seeing that issue, we'll uh, probably successfully be able to uh, to grab that the second time around. Look at that smooth strolling, isn't it just awesome? Just be able to zoom in and out and, and look at the details that you need to, and then look at this nice <laughs> overarching view of everything. Absolutely. But before we get too deep into the series, should we explain where all the usual UI elements are? Yeah, they're not in their normal places. Absolutely. So for those that may not have seen Capture Age before, we're going to go over some of the Capture Age basics. This is a Capture Age quick 101 for you guys uh, if you are having your Capture Age cherry popped for the first time. <laughs> um, so down on the bottom left, you'll see basic information, the civilizations, the player names, of course, but the numbers here represent the number of villages and military. The number to the left is 21 for Viper, that's 21 villagers. And the number to the right is a one, which is one military, in this case, his scout. Um, or maybe, yeah, that would be his scout. That would be his scout. But I, don't think, I think the king might be counted as a King counts as a, as, a, as a civilian, so it would count as a villager, I believe. Or actually, it might just be nothing. Or maybe, but it's 22 population, which is, yeah, shown here. So 22 population out of 45 is Viper's current population. But he actually should have 23 population. Because he's got 21 villagers, mm -hmm. one king, and one scout. Oh, that's correct. Interesting. All right, that's a capture age bug, maybe. I don't. Maybe they've just never tested Regis. Yeah, maybe. All right, well, that's interesting. We're helping out. We'll give them some feedback. It's still in beta, guys. But uh, the number to the left is the villager count. The number to the right is the military count. Then you see the wood, food, gold, stone, and KD. We can also... At the bottom right, see the current technologies research that shows the blacksmith text. It shows some of the important texts like ballistics and bloodlines. It also shows the eco text. You can see there Viper reaching the feudal age as the Vikings immediately gets wheelbarrow, and Four that tech three. is now activated. Yeah, so nice. Um, and then for the rest of the UI, this area here will show whatever we are uh, selecting. So if we select the market, we can see the HP and the construction percentage. Um, we can select a villager, yeah. for example, and see the HP, the armor, the attack, the resources control. We can also select all of our villagers and we can see the totals of all that of they're carrying. We can see their total HP. And this is great because we can also select an opponent's scout. Um, along with, uh, let's say, this king, and we can compare them side by side. So we can see that Viper's king has more health than D8 Baby's scout. Funny enough. But doesn't have any attack, so... All Clearly right, an inferior unit. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> then in the center, the centerpiece of it all, the mini-map, of course, and uh, ob obviously we have there 
the zoom level, and of course we have the game time at the bottom right, as well as the total resources available on the map. If anyone uh, is interested in that, it could be useful for longer games. Yeah, if you get to the very, very late game, it's interesting to see you know how much gold is available for people Ooh. still to mine. And oh boy, Viper! And, uh, literally, like as, as I was comparing the stats of these two units, we can see that Viper's king here taking a couple of hits from uh, the blue player's but scout. He's, he's but so close to home; he'll be fine. He will be fine, but that's also going to allow D8 Baby in to Viper's base to get some scouting information. Alt F giving us the line of sight and there we go. We can switch over to D8 Baby and see what he sees. Now, it's worth noting both players up to the castle age at basically the same time. D8 Baby then. Look at that. I'm trying to pick up a villager that might be a little in. injured underneath the TC. And then getting absolutely nailed by arrows in every direction. <laughs> Don't go here, there's a castle. There's a castle, there's towers, there's a TC. Yeah. So, so far, not a lot of valuable information, but uh, it's kind of useful, I guess, to see what he's up to. Maybe he'll scout the front and see what's happening there. Maybe he'll see some exposed gold or stone or something along those lines. So, it looks like Viper's coming back to clean this up. Yeah, and he should successfully get that now as well, since obviously the yeah, baby scout is much lower. But um, yeah, to remove the fog of war then, and oh, I just put team colors on by mistake. I didn't mean to do that. But uh, we want to see what they're up to. Viper probably just going to be booming, right? Like two new TCs. Um, we can see him out. putting one up on the gold, one up on the wood to the left, and uh, taking advantage of the fact that he now has handcart in, while D8 Baby doesn't even have wheelbarrow at this point. And then D8 Baby on the other side, adding in his second TC, and from the castle is producing these camel wonderful archers. camel archers. Ooh. Viper, though, obviously not going to be producing berserks. Like, who makes berserks? Especially in against this camel situation? archers. Like, maybe right. if you were against goths, berserks might be a, might be a consideration. Mm. But at this stage, I'm just wondering, like, what's Viper going to do to defend? Okay, dropping the monastery, get some monks out, try to convert any of these camel archers if they come too close. Yeah, right. I mean, he's just going to be playing the defensive game. Um, and I guess the question here comes to sort of be like, well, can Viper handle the Berbers? Can can Vikings handle the Berbers in the post-Imperial Age? Like, if they have all techs, like, are they good enough? Because that's kind of where this game is heading. That's true. It's well, it's not necessarily the post imp it's more about just in early Imperial Age. Right. right. Because if Viper is purely booming, like we can see he's on three TCs, DA Baby's only on two. So he is presumably going to have a stronger economy in the early stage. So he might get up to Imperial Age first and maybe he's able to use that better economy, faster Imperial Age time, and try to deal some damage before they get to the post imp Yeah. And I think as well that Sorry, I'm just having really like a lot of fun with trying to zoom and stuff. Uh, but I think DA Baby here, you know, he's he's obviously invested into the military at this point. He's going to move out across the map now, and he's going to look to see if he can find some exposed villagers from the Viper to try and equalize that villager deficit. He knows he's going to get out ecoed by the Viking player, and so he's probably going to try and opt to try and yeah, basically kill some villas. He's going to find one immediately coming in, finding one build by the house. And Viper's not closed this off. We know that there is a TC just under the fog here. And he's going to come in here and maybe force some villagers to go idle, but probably struggle to kill yeah, He shouldn't many. be able to kill anything, especially that nice little house wall there, that one piece of stone wall as well to stop him running into his base. And then with that line of towers, oh, oh, oh it's going to be a trap. It's going to be a trap. Does he have loom though? Viper, I don't know if he has loom. He doesn't have loom. So this house should go down. It's only 56 HP. Ooh, but but here's the, the monk. monk. And we can see the monk here targeting this unit. He's going to come in trying to get the conversion. Is he going to get that conversion though? I don't think he will. D8 Baby going to bring himself out of range. And that house there on 31 HP. D8 Baby's opting to go back. And Viper looks like he's going to finish it and trap these units in. Honestly, if I was the blue player in this situation, I would have committed, killed the house, and got out. Right, yeah, you lose one camel archer, but at least you're free. Whereas in this case, you've lost five, essentially, because they're not able to really do yeah. much. And that one very nearly getting converted. He does pull it back just in time. Um, all in all, though, I mean, honestly, this is kind of bad for D8 Baby now. He can't really utilize these guys as well as he'd like. Viper's got a tab on its location, and... Uh, you know, this commitment into military at this point has not paid off so far. He's still only on two TCs, and Viper's Eco is going to get really far ahead. In fact, what we can do is we can actually look at the resources gained per minute, I believe. And it should be C to, to do that. 
Uh, there you go. We can see resources per minute. That's in the past minute of game time, essentially. So you can just sort of track who's gathering more resources. And we see Vibo you know, clearly ahead here. I mean, look at the food income. It's so much higher. That's helping his boom. He's got more wood income. He's got more gold income. And, I mean, at this point, D8 Baby's just adding his third TC now. That is not good situation for him, right? He's only just getting the third TC. Viper's going to be imp before long, and he'll probably use that power spike here to, to go for arbs or something, and go for arbs and siege, Arb and just arbs and rams. Thing you would expect to yeah. see, for sure. But Viper's already, you know, 10, 12 villagers ahead, plus wheelbarrow, plus hand car. Okay, you can see the micro on the monks there as well, trying to focus on the on the conversion. Oh, all three, three, and cleans this up, keeping all three monks alive oh, as well. That, that is, is just, perfection. That is amazing. That is so That's good. That's what you want to see, or what you don't want to see, depending on your point of view. Yeah, you don't want to see it if you're D8 baby, but you want to see it if you're the viper. And uh, if you look at those eco upgrades as well, there, you know, he's got heavy plow in, he's got um, uh, hand cart, so he's economically ahead. He's got a larger number of villagers as well, 63 against 42. And uh, quite frankly, Viper may start to run away with this game with a fast Imperial upgrade and a power spike from Arbalest. I, I, I can see it happening now. The writing's already on the wall for D8 Baby, oh, and he's yeah. being far too passive about this now. Yeah, he might have been better off. Maybe come for a siege workshop for Manganels. Monks for sure. as well for himself, maybe. Like, just try and maybe push on the right side. Maybe go for this TC. Uh, or maybe he could just continue to push through I mean, here. Even but just, like, sieging that TC of Manganels from across the wall. Right? Oh, that denies here, yeah. the gold income. And just That's prevents true. Viper from just free booming like this. Because at the moment, there's nothing really happening in Viper's base. Like, how much is sure you can pick up a couple of villages here and there at best. Right, that's not going to stop him from booming. Yeah. It's and not. And that's the Imperial like Age. 22 minutes. It's incredibly it's quick. It it's really is. And uh, you compare that to D8 Baby right now, who is essentially, well, he's pop-capped, and he's a very long way from Imp at this point. Um, that power spike from Viper is going to be huge. We're going to see Archery. Pardon me, Archery range is just coming down right now. He's saving for a castle as well, so I assume he's just going to use that to... Um, either take map control or maybe place it aggressively. It's not like Viper to place aggressive castles like that. No, I don't think it's going to be like right in DA Baby's It's going to be here or something. You know, like maybe like mid-map somewhere. Maybe here. Somewhere to help make forward trebs, but nothing that could be a doubt castle and lose a game. Or a VV castle. Or a VV castle, if you saw yesterday's trash. Yeah. Uh, Viper, definitely more of a safe player. Like he's... You know, I feel like the only times you really see him going forward with castles and stuff and not taking it, like, playing it safe is when he's playing casual games or just, like, ladder games. When it comes to tournament play, he generally makes the safe decisions. Right, because those sort of risky decisions, like, they can help you win if you're behind. But when you're ahead, why take unnecessary risks? Yeah. He's also taking the opportunity to grab the relics and does have two already with a third coming in right now. And, oh, well, Maybe a four, this one's going to get caught. Yeah, baby, we'll see that and uh, take it down. So yeah. he's going to deny one at least. But, you know, he's setting himself up for the long term. This castle placement, it's not overly aggressive. It's sensible. It protects this uh, bank of archery ranges. And protects his gold here. And you can see now as well, Viper's starting to upgrade techs at the blacksmith. Uh, he should have padded archer. Uh, sorry. Uh, padded Archer armor, just as he reaches him, and then he can do Bracer straight after that. And uh, meanwhile, D8 Baby, he's closing in on the castle uh, Imperial Age upgrade, but he's going to click up to Imp, but basically a, a minute after Viper's already up to Imperial himself. And he's also dropping a fourth TC for himself up near the top corner of the map. Right there. Yeah. So he recognizes he's behind an economy, but is he going to be able to stall out long enough? to catch up and get to the incredibly powerful late game that the Berbers have. And that's that's the question here. Yeah, He's I building mean, the defensive castle, hoping to stall out. Maybe, are those archery rangers or stables coming up on the top right there? They should be... Okay, they're archery rangers. Okay, I was going to say they should be stables. Well, if you know that your opponent's making arbs, then probably elite skirms is probably your best Just bet. Just to stall? Yeah. yeah. A, a lot, like, immediately to stall, yeah. But this isn't good. It looks like you might end up losing this castle here as the crossbows are coming in. And there's just not enough villagers building that. It's like D8 Baby has... No rush on this castle. It's like in your own time. You just build it whenever you're ready. Oh, janitors! 
Old janitors. How could I forget the janitors to no, no, take out the trash? There's a reason you forget about them. God people damn. don't make them very often. No. There might be a reason for that. Well, there might be a reason why they don't make them often. Yeah. Because they're not as good. Yeah. 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 You get it. Well, genitals. No. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys. The thing is, janitors are... I don't know. They're, they're okay, but... I, I guess, you know, you don't have to upgrade the elite skirm upgrade. That's something. So, you still need to get bloodlines for them. Yeah, that's true. Need a bit of stable. But, I mean, if you think about them in terms of population efficiency, they are more population efficient than a skirmisher. But is population efficiency the big problem right now? And you're only at 89 pop right. out of 105. 15 villages behind as well. Look at this. Viper's not even going to finish off the castle with the trebs. He's going straight for the PC. Castle is no threat. And uh, D8 Baby here going to retreat away with the Vils. But Viper already heading over there with some Arbalest. So he's going to be raiding the Nico on the north side. And uh, I'm expecting Viper with Rams. Yeah, there it is. Uh, he's already coming in with Capped Ram. And uh, Siege Ram will probably follow at some point soon. D8 Baby just reaching Imperial now. Bloodlines being researched. And more Genitors being queued. Can he hold? Can he stall? And he's, he's already just, losing map control He doesn't here. have many genitals either, right? He's only got 12 military, but I think 25. I feel like he'd be better off not waiting for a few more numbers. Especially waiting yeah. for upgrades. Look at the health pool though. It's quite similar. Yeah, but I've got so much less health. Ten, ten of less have the same health pool as, as genitals. Now Bloodlines is in. Now Bloodlines now is in. Now in. Jumped ahead. Where will you be when the Bloodlines kick in? But, um... It's still difficult. Like, he still needs a bigger mass, ideally. Um, and right now, Viper's calling a... Well, not Viper's calling D8 GG. D8 Baby is calling GG. And uh, that was a very quick, straightforward game. Um, surprising, really, that it was so quick. But then, I guess, it is the Viper. And it is a relatively lesser-known Chinese player. Um... We kind of underestimated the Vikings, I think, but when you consider how quick their eco gets going and how quick you usually get to the castle age on Regicide Fortress, it's no surprise that he was able to boom up so quickly and be able to transition up to Imperial uh, in no time at all and take advantage of that huge power spike from Arbalest and, of course, from uh, the Trebs that you get and even being able to add in the Rams as well. So was it the sieve or was it the player? I'd say it was probably both, but uh, mostly think, the player. I think <laughs> mostly the player. <laughs> because I would say in general, Vikings are slightly worse in this situation than Berbers. Yeah. Like if you let your opponent freely boom like D8 Baby, then of course the Vikings are going to be strong. But if you try to play a more aggressive style, you know, you get five to ten camel archers, you know, two mangonels, a couple of monks, and you go aggressive on their face, you try to take down their TCs, deny gold, deny stone, then they can't freely boom, right? They have to invest far more resources into defensive military, their own siege workshops, their own mangonels. And then it's just a very different game, essentially. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, there you go. That's that's our first match. It is a best of three, so there will be a second match to follow. Let's go between games now and see what our next map is going to be. It looks like Highland is going to be the pick from D8 Baby. That's going to be his home map. I'm going to be interested to see if he can do anything here. Obviously, um, it's not going to be easy. Viper, would you believe it? A formidable opponent. <laughs> We're going to have to see what's in store and see what sieves they pick especially because Highland can sort of be played in a number of different ways. Because like as you can see on the little image for Highland, there's sort of like a bit of a river and there's one crossing. Mm -hmm. And some players, you know, you wall up the crossing and you play hard on water. Other players, you know, you try to sneak some villages and go for, you know, some sneaky rangers and things like that. And there's just a lot of options in terms of what you do. Absolutely. Um, let's go, however, into that game right now. Welcome back, everybody. We are here. And, oh, the game is paused. Uh, let me fix that real quick. Um, probably need to do this. There we go. 
and then this. There we go. Let's go back into the game now. There we go. Welcome, everyone, to game number two. Still getting to grips with Capture Age here. We'd love to hear some suggestions from you guys uh, how we could perhaps use it a little better. I already see Mr. Kirby official in the chat saying uh, selecting units removes the ability to see what's created and the uh, units players could what uh sorry i can't understand um i think you're trying to say you want to see what units are being created at the same time as other stuff yeah so less yeah. clicking on units except for when it's important yeah exactly uh because we want to see this information down here but uh, welcome everyone to game two uh viper leading 1-0 not really a big surprise but this is now d8 baby's home map and uh, i'm very curious to see what he's capable of here i, I do think that Regicide Fortress is sort of one of those specialty maps which Viper is just strong on in general as well um, and obviously came to that with a very big, um, well, not a big plan, but like a very, well, he had a game plan, right? He definitely had like a plan. He came to it and with he an has advantage. also a lot of experience yeah. playing RF. Exactly. Um, whereas Highland is a map which isn't seen so often and it is a very standard map by all means, but it is at least not seen uh, as often as, as Regicide Fortress, I feel. Yeah, um, so it's a very rare to see it in tournaments because sometimes the gameplay can be just boring sometimes because, you know, it can be a bit of a stalemate map. Both players wall, both players are fighting for water and then not much happens. Yeah, uh, it can certainly devolve into that as you see this crossing point here. Uh, just a little ice path between two sides and they could be very easily walled up. But that can also open up the opportunity for landings. You can see some sneaky docks at the edge of the map, a transport ship, a couple of sneak villagers. You could even do right. it in the Dark Age now. That you, you can, can even dark sneak age a villager if you just send a villager early enough and just walk through the middle. Yeah. Yeah, you right. could do that as well. Uh, but generally, players like to control the crossing as early as possible. We already see Vi or saw Viper patrolling here. Uh, and Viper, of course, will be in his classic yellow, uh, playing as the Spanish. And in fact, it will be a Spanish mirror because D8 Baby in the blue playing as the Spanish as well right here. It's an interesting Viv. They're not exactly you know, a water powerhouse like you might expect to see something like the Italians or the Portuguese maybe if that's the plan they're going for. So the fact that they have Spanish implies to me that they're, they're planning on getting for conquistadors. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like maybe you castle drop the middle and like petard bust through and just run in with conks, or you know maybe you sneak some villagers over and you land a castle somewhere. Something like that is what I think we're going to see. Yeah, I do. I definitely think we'll see that. I mean, you're not really going to be able to. No, I mean you could rush or you could man at arms rush, but it's too risky because it the choke point could be walled up by the time you right. even and and then one send one demo out. raft comes over there and just kills you. Yeah. Uh, and it's just kind of too risky to do that. Both players should be docking, though. We can already see D8 Baby here building that dock. Look at her hammering away. She is Look hammering at those pixels. that dock. Look oh, at it. There's so many pixels. <laughs> at least 10. <laughs> <laughs> at least 10. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Dock is up. And um, that's going to be... If he, gets, if he gets out some fish before Viper... Could be a s oh wait no he doesn't he won't Viper's already got his dock I I didn't even notice he was building the dock here but uh, I guess that's yellow on the mini map for you right, yeah it just looks like it's a problem we're always going to have <laughs> but uh, talking about dock location D8 baby doesn't have any big fish nearby he's actually wait look at that the health bar of the dock is it follows the birds yeah that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> is this the health bar of the dock or is it actually the birds that you're killing? Maybe both. Well, the birds, they live at the dock, right? If there's yeah. no dock, there's no birds. True, true. I know, that's hilarious, though. That's brilliant. Um, I was going to say, though, he's got no big fish and he's searching for big fish now. Uh, and he's not going to find... Oh, we're on the wrong point of view there. Uh, we're not gonna, he's not going to find any. He's very unlucky with this. Um, he's only got little fish. And meanwhile, though... He loses his scout as well. So D8 Baby, not oh, off to a particularly um, strong start here. Hmm? But Viper also has a death. So I think he might have lost a Viper village may have a lost a vill. Uh, let's zoom in. Hmm. Did he lose the vill on the dock maybe? Like, did he... Yeah, I mean, he has to be down a vill, right? You'd think. But he's still ahead in, in villages overall. So, oh, there oh, we go. There, we, there. There. we found it. Villager. Must have lost a vill luring the boar there. 
But uh, yeah, I wanted to say Viper's got much better fish on his side. Classic Viper map hacks as always. Well, we say better fish. It's like one fish to zero. It's not insanely better. No. In fact, the best place to dock is in the corner. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. That's yeah. not particularly useful. And there's actually a lot more deep fish on the right side compared to the left of the river. But the right side is also bigger, to be fair. But uh, D8 Baby, up to Feudal now, will be going up uh, a little bit faster than Viper, actually. And I think that's due to the fact that, you know, Viper only has two fishing ships right now. And D8 Baby already has four fishing ships. So he's obviously had a very good Dark Age, had a very good transition up to Feudal. And uh, from this point, at 25 population... Uh, I wonder if he's actually going to be comfortably able to fast castle because... I don't think he's going for fast castle. No, he's not because he's not on the gold. Well, he's sending everyone to wooden gold. This is like yeah. you know, your standard water build. Exactly. So it doesn't look like fast castle is on the cards for him. Whereas Viper, he's still not up to feudal yet. And this definitely does look a bit more like a fast castle with the mill coming up on the deer and the shore fish. Um, and still not up to feudal, even building a mill on the berries. That's a second mill for Viper in the Dark Age. No yeah. indication of going Clearly for water at all. not wanting to contest water, and that's also probably why he hasn't made too many fish. No. But he's not planning on contesting it, and he knows they're going to die anyway. So, you know, where's the sense of investing another yeah. 75 wood into a fish when he could just make a mill? Yeah. Uh, the fishing isn't even that great. Like, he knows he's only got one big fish here, and then he sees, oh, well, it's kind of inefficient. It's kind of not very good. Uh, I guess I'll just sort of make the three fish and call it a day. They've already paid for themselves with the amount of food they've already gathered. This uh, fish here this is already Spent. it's already gone. Yeah. So these are already paid for themselves. But uh, D8 Baby now up to feudal. He's going for a galley on the left side. That's uh, where a right side. And on the left side, he's going for another galley as well. Has, has he not played Wall of Kingdoms Water before? Normally, you start with a fire galley. Normally, yes. Yeah. But but not not yet. Not, not this time. Not today. Uh, he knows Viper's not up to feudal, so he's probably thinking that he can get That's away true. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play a little bit greedy. You go for the stronger boat. Because yeah. galleys, galleys are actually better at killing fish, right? And it's also better for like you know denying docks, denying castles that might denying be coming this. up near the water. Yeah, exactly. For example, denying these right villages. There. Uh, I wonder if you can cross the ice here. Sometimes you can cross the ice. Other times you can't. Uh, it wouldn't make too much difference anyway because he's built a galley on both sides. But imagine if he only built one dock here. On both sides, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, he actually would be annoying here because these villas kind of want to automatically drop the food at this mill. And obviously now it's being camped by the galley. But uh, I think Viper will be all too aware of that and probably send them back to the TC. But uh, we'll see if he's paying attention. Feudal Age is coming in for Viper, though. He'll obviously transition straight up to Castle. He's already on stone, so he'll be gathering the stone for the... Um, Castle, castle uh, once he reaches the castle age, and yeah, he's paying attention here. I thought this is just strange. Like, DA Baby hasn't killed the fish yet, and hello, fire, fire galley now. Okay, finally going into the fish, and he's also made a third dock as well, heavily investing into water here. Well, you know what? If he locks down the water, it doesn't matter if Viper's got a castle because he won't be able to get across the middle if it's locked down, maybe. I don't know. Conquistadors are so strong, they can even kill boats. So Yeah, they can definitely you know, kill boats. Once uh, you get a is it really them. that much of a, a powerful thing for D8 Baby to control the water? I don't know. But it does give him the opportunity to perhaps make a transport ship. Uh, maybe he's got the opportunity to make an archery range, uh, not an archery range, a stable, land some scouts across, or go up to the Castle Age, make some knights, and send those across as Could well. even do you know, Spanish archer rush. Nobody expects that. Yeah, nobody expects the Spanish archer rush. Yeah, just get in there. And I like how he's building his houses as well. You know, he's doing it all along the shoreline. So he'll be able to see if there's any landings coming in once he gets town watch. And uh, for now, yeah, Viper's going up to castle with the intention to build a castle. And D8 Baby is, is in the meantime, locking down the water. But he's actually stopped training more boats. He's actually only got three galleys and one fire. And instead, he's now opting to add more farms. Uh, he's got eight farms now. And he's... Probably going to transition up to Castle as well fairly soon, but it'll be obviously a little bit later than Viper here. For sure. And just like something about this map, it's generally there's not a lot of fish, right? We've talked about at the start, there's yeah. four or five deep sea fish in the entire river. Normally on water maps, you fight for water because fishing is so incredibly powerful. Yeah. But here, it's like you're m mostly stuck with these shore fish. Is it really worth it to invest so heavily into water and then not make any more fishing ships? Because it's not useful to make them. 
Yeah, I mean, it, he's got four, right? And it, they'll, it's it's four extra eco units that are working for him. I mean, look at the eco here. It's 28 versus 37. But Viper so, is almost in castle age. Yeah, that's true. But it is a non-zero, like, increase. So it, it's probably still good to have the fish. He's got four. He's not like he's invested that heavily. But I think just having the ability to lock down the middle of the map, or at least have the information, is, is probably still valuable. Um, and, and having four fish is still better than having no fish, however way you slice it, you know. Okay, okay. But uh, I still think, though, that if Viper was to run across the middle, he'd very easily get across unpunished because there's not, there's not enough water here, yeah. in a way. Like, you have to either commit to it or, or not, I feel. Here's and Viper, Viper coming down one TC immediately on the gold on the wood line there. I don't think he feels threatened at all. Like, if you're faster to castle... Why not just start booming up a little bit faster? Especially in a mirror match. Well, yeah, like, you, you know that your opponent has invested into water. Mm. It's a safe assumption that they're not going to be up to castle as quickly as you are. Yeah. So the only thing that can really punish you is fuel aggression. You know, landing archers, landing scouts, something like that. And how likely do you think that is? Clearly, Viper doesn't think it's likely at all. No. Like, he's building this castle with, with one vill. Two know, villages, basically, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, with no yeah. protection whatsoever. The thing is, though, like, this is the this is the crazy part. Like, if D8 Baby did play out of the box and actually went for this, like, landing Imagine attempt... Imagine just three scouts would just completely deny that. He could do so much damage, right? And it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a waste in a way. Like, he's got the water control. He could do a landing. It would be extremely risky. But I feel like when the odds are stacked against you in a matchup like this, I feel like playing that way against Viper here and, and you, you know, when Viper's being greedy, punishing him for that could actually be the better approach. But he's lost that opportunity now because that castle's up and Viper's eco is doing just fine with three TCs. Yep, third TC coming up right there. You know, by the time D8 Baby hits Castle Age, Bi will have three TCs pumping. He might have a couple of Conquistadors out as well if he wants to. And then it's just going to be a struggle because D8 Baby's always going to be behind from now on. Pretty much. The only benefit he has is water control. And, you know, you have to sort of balance how much water control you do. Because if you want to keep making war galleys, for instance, you struggle making TCs and you're not going to have as strong of an economy. Yeah, exactly. So he has to walk that fine line between economy and military presence on the water at this stage. Yeah, and we also uh, mentioned before like how the eco is looking. D8 Baby's just reached Castle, and the eco is actually the same, both of 39 eco units. But that's actually going to change because Viper will get ahead a little bit while D8 Baby's building his second TC. Right. And D8 Baby isn't building the third TC just yet. He should probably build it, I think, because uh, I don't know. It, it, just yeah, he's months. just building it now. There you go. I almost feel like it's a bit risky, like uh, building the, the castle after the TCs, because what if Viper comes across with a bunch of conks now? Well, I think he's sort of relying on the stone walls to keep him out. And potentially... Uh, you know, I see, yeah. Right. Because he'll know if there's a dock, so that's not too bad. You know, he's staying near the middle, so he'll see if the Conquistadors are coming. If there's a Petard bus coming, he'll see if he can maybe try to snipe one of the Petards to slow them down. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And uh, Viper actually going for it, using the Conks to fight the uh, the boats. And it's pretty effective. Like, look at the, the damage done onto this galley. It's less than half health just from these three Conks. They're insane. They're actually insane. Look at this. Look at that. He's going to kill the boats. Like, with the... Freaking conks, right, come I on. I think they did like 10 damage each, which is insane for a land unit yeah. fighting a water unit. It's it's 10 damage. It's insane. Okay, War Galley and Fletching coming in though, so it seems D8 Baby is going to invest a little bit more heavily, make some more War Galleys, get yeah. out there and... Oh, and he's made Whoa. a dock down here too, okay, so I he's like capitalizing that. on these and fish. two extra fish. Okay, I like this now, this dock on the deep sea fish. Yeah. Now he's actually ahead in Vils. I'm surprised. I really thought Viper would actually stay ahead because obviously D8 Baby's TCs came up later but I guess it's because he's added the extra fish and having the water control has allowed him to stay competitive in the economy side of things even with such a late castle age time compared to the Viper but we see but the Viper he's wanting to get onto water himself he's building a dock but it's being denied it is but his conks they're trading pretty effectively here against these war galleys oh Actually they are to back off a little bit from the fire ship and yeah, look at them go. They're just tanky, tanky little beasts. 
They're actually um actually gonna have to go back, but I think if they if he's got a few more, he could quite easily get them. And oh I saw a monk. He's gonna try and convert the ships. That's always an option too. And yeah, we're gonna see that potentially now. Here we go. He's gonna try and convert this one. Yeah, this one is going for the full HP. HP. But it does take a lot longer to kill uh, transport, uh, not transport, convert a ship, I think. Oh, but now he's been debated into range of the war galleys. And boom. Dead monk. Dead monk. But can those conks deny that castle? <gasps> oh. I don't think so. I don't think, I think they're out of range. It might, maybe if they're just in range, but then the war galleys get to, you know, deal this free damage onto them and he might not want No, to no, they're actually out of range. I, I'm sure they are. Or maybe, well, even if they're not, then... Ah, oh, man, that, that's actually so good for D8 Baby. Viper, though, at this point, what do you think he does? Do you think he goes for Imp and tries to trap the castle down? Or, I think so. Yeah, do you think he goes for Docks on the edge and tries to take the water? Maybe just Monks and Trebs? You know, convert all the boats? Because, like, when you get in Pure Age, you get plus three range in your Monks. Twelve range versus War Galleys that have nine range. Yeah, that's an opportunity to do some something. Oh, they've only got seven range, sorry. Yeah. Seven, well, they have seven right now. Seven They'd they have eight, eight if they had Bodkin, but they don't, so... Yeah, um, it's interesting to do Botkin right now as I say that. But uh, I'm interested to see how Viper approaches this. I mean, obviously, for the time being, he can't really use those Conquistadors. There's no way for him to, to do anything with them. So it's uh, sunk resources in a way. Hmm. And D.O. Baby, meanwhile, like he can keep making boats because they will serve him long term, holding down the water. We also see Viper saving up for Imperial Age right now. He's got yep. almost 1,000 foo, he's got the 800 gold, and they are straight up to him. Yep, so Imp's in. Trebs and some other unit composition yeah. is what Viper's going to be making. And DA Baby probably just needs to invest heavily in water and then try to get him himself. Maybe. I want to see him make a transport ship and get across. Uh, I think if, like, if he can send his conks over, maybe he could do some raiding damage, catch Viper by surprise. But cool. no transport in queue at the moment. He's way ahead on Vils as well, look. He's 69 Vils versus 53, which I'm surprised about. Like, they're both on three TCs, right? Viper had the TCs faster. I think he's just cut villager production to get up faster. Yeah, I think so. I think he did. He's obviously really favoring the Imperial Age uptime, and we saw how it helped or worked last game with the Vikings. He was so much faster to imp. He just ha got that momentum. Will he be able to do that here, though, with such a, a different situation? It's a different setup altogether. We'll see. And he's also got nearly a thousand stone in the bank. So he's planning on building another castle somewhere right. on his side of the island, probably to defend an area or maybe help a push a dock, maybe. You know, if he builds a castle on the waterline that doesn't get seen by a war galley, that gives him space then to build more docks and then, you know, get some fire ships or some galleys of his own out. Yeah. If, if I was D8 Baby now, I'd probably be making more war galleys because if Viper does make a treb, you need quite a few of them. Like, Trebs are quite resistant to arrow fire, so it might be difficult for him to to kill Treb. Thankfully, though, his Treb uh, castle, is that technically on the hill? I think it might be. Um, it's hard to say, but he might actually be on the hill, so take I'm reduced damage. I'm not really sure how it works, but part of the castle is definitely on the like hill. Like, half of it is. It's half and half. So, you get 50, instead of 25%, you do 12.5%. <laughs> if only. <laughs> No, no, not quite. But uh, it, it, it's either on or it's off. Um, I'm, uh, I would assume that I'm it's on. I'm thinking it's off. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm We've thinking it's off. We both the exact opposite thing. I mean, it's two tiles on the hill and two tiles off the hill. So well, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not the sure. the half or the back half count? It is on the hill. Uh, okay. Yeah, I would assume that it's on the hill unless someone says otherwise. Well, Spaden says it's on the hill, so that must be true. Yeah, Spaden knows a thing or two about Age of Empires. He does, he does. So, um, yeah, we, we do have D8 Baby holding down the middle here. And Imperial Age is in. Viper, though, like you said, block printing coming in as well. He's just going to try and convert these boats. We'll see if he can get one or two boats here. He's obviously waiting for block printing for the plus three range. And remember, you can also get Inquisition, the Spanish unique tech that makes monks convert things incredibly quickly. That is also an option for him. I, he might have already done it and we just missed it. Uh, hmm. Maybe. Not sure. But it's probably something that he'll get later on, maybe after he's got some trebs out. But where are these conquistadors going from D8, baby? Are They're just going over here. <laughs> and just going to sit on the hill. Interesting. Not doing any raids yet. And oh boy, that is a... Oh, wow. Castle. That's a very ballsy, ballsy castle right there. But... 
he might. Uh, there's only three war galleys. Yeah, he and might be able to monks. do it if he gets more monks out. So we'll see, but the conks are coming over. The problem is they can't do much because the, the castle behind it is in range of this castle here. And if he gets this castle up, he'll be able to build docks in front. And of course, for now, the treb here gonna go for the castle of D8 Baby at the back. And it's actually coming down slowly but surely, but still more monks from Viper, more conversions. And the castle's about to go up. The castle's nearly finished for Viper, so he's going to secure that water space. Those war galleys aren't going to be able to sit there for much longer. Yeah. I'm curious to know if, if that's taking full damage or not. It, oh, it, it missed. It <laughs> took zero, zero damage. damage. Please. <laughs> it's doing it, it 500 was... damage, which is... That's, that's full damage, I think. So that's not doesn't on the, the hill, technically. Doesn't 400 damage? Hmm? The trebuchet normally does 400 damage, doesn't it? Look, it's doing... Yeah, about 400. Yeah. So, full damage. So it's full damage. It's not on the hill. I didn't think it was. But um, that castle is going down, man. And there's so many monks and so many conks here. I'm worried for D8 Baby. His response is... How it is. How? He's seen the monks. He's seen the conquistadors. And he's seen the trebs. Yeah. Wouldn't like the logical solution to be something, some combination of Hussar and some other unit? Wouldn't that make more sense? Use the hussars to try to snipe off these monks? Mm. Instead of these pikemen that can't really do much of anything at the moment? Yeah, maybe. It's, it's like they're just going to run into the meat grinder right here. Look at the monks go. Viper's Look at the getting lines. so many conversions. I love this. He's going to convert the boats as well. They're absolutely going to just tear through this. And those boats. Oh, those boats are going to be in range of this castle which D8 Baby's placing right here. And, well, I mean, this is just going to be... Well, it's going to be tough for D8 Baby, but he can at least sort of hold a little bit, perhaps, if this castle goes up. The question is, can he finish the castle? I think he will, but it's already being trebbed down. Yeah, that's true. That's more true. trebs will come forwards, and there'll be even more trebs, and then the castle will definitely fall. Yeah, it, it's very difficult to, to... I don't know, maybe he's just trying to buy some time? I mean, the thing is, the halves you've got to be careful because if they do start rushing you down and there's enough of them you do have to pull your conks back and you have to then go into retreat mode which kind of does give your you know your opponent some ground but viper can always micro right. away from always, these guys you know, if he converts five or six of the helms all of a sudden then the fight turns around because he's, yeah. he's just built his own meat shield to the conks so there you have it. The castle immediately goes down to that single treb right there. And uh, meanwhile, Viper's coming in with more conversions. Four halves getting converted, and there's more to go as well. Like, he's just oh, he's laying down the conversions. I want to know how many conversions he's got at the end of the game. Because he's I, got I would a good number at least already. 20 here. by now. Yeah, it's, it's really solid. He's even converted the villager. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? And then look at that little space that the Funk is standing. Do you baby, if he wants to take this, he needs to delete more of the walls. Right, he needs to like sort of really surround so those conks. Viper's helps are almost winning, <laughs> thanks to just the mass power of the conks and even the monks healing from behind. Yeah, and then here we go, the more conversion. Another round of conversion. The faith has been restored. Now the the rats are an interesting addition though, because they will tank quite a bit, but they'll die to the converted halves that Viper's already converted. So I mean, the, the rams are going to go down as well, and uh, Viper's slowly but surely going to push in here. D8 Baby adding more and more barracks, training a lot of... Look at that, 29 uh, Halberdier oh, and Q up. right now. And the problem now is D8 Baby, he can't have Hussars because he's just given Viper a bunch of Halberdiers. Yeah, it's right. very very awkward. He wants to make Hussars to try to snipe these monks, but that's not really going to work anymore. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I probably would have gone for the Hussar to begin with. Maybe like Hussar Skirm? Hmm. Might have been the better chance. Yeah, Redemption now coming in as well. He's probably going to try and convert the Rams as well. <laughs> Why not? Just following that one Ram. <laughs> <there you laughs> He's go. just waiting for the tech. He's like, I'm going to get it. And so the Rams enough to actually push the Trebs back. So, and, and you know, Viper is going to have to try and push up this hill. But uh, yeah, I mean, eco-wise, DA Baby's sort of equal in the economy. But Viper's trading much more effectively overall. 62 kills yeah, to 34. Two to one KD here. Plus the conversions. So it's actually more like 20. Co There's 20 conversions. Look. You can just see it's 20 conversions. Oh, yeah. Between the He's and killed the 64, but D8 Baby's lost 86. Or so maybe he just lost 20 bills to a boar. Yeah, it could be that could too. Have, could have <laughs> happened. So, yeah. Um, Viper, though, look, he's not actually pushed up the hill yet. 
he's actually come fallen back a little bit. Um, and it's not just going to be that quick push that he was perhaps hoping for. DA Baby has stalled. He has bought himself some time. The question is, what does he transition into? Because there's no way he can do this with only Halb. And look at the conversions coming in on the bloody Halbs as well. Oh, that's it. GG. And I think that's really the issue, right? I like, feel like DA Baby didn't really like lose at this point. It was more just, I'm frustrated with all these monks and things. Mm. And I can't really see what I'm going to do for the next 20 minutes. Yeah. Because right. the, the he's problem. not dead. He's still got a full economy booming. He's got lots of resources in the bank. <laughs> but he's just decided, you know, I'm, I'm sick of this. Yeah. It's, it's really tough, actually. I mean, he is in a position where... He can hold, and he did successfully sort of hold, but he's investing so much of his resources into just holding, and he doesn't really have a long-term game plan. Um, the ability for D8 Baby to not only hold, but then push out, it's kind of awkward for him. It's kind of difficult. Like The only reason he's really holding there is because he has a hill, and Viper can't push straight into him. But he had no follow-up, and without a follow-up, you're just sort of left in a situation where, well... What do I do now? GG, I guess. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think that, that sums it up. Yeah. He's not in a position to win in the short term, and he probably can't imagine, you know, how do I swing this around? Maybe if he'd looked at the map a bit more clearly. I believe someone in chat earlier said that there were four relics on his side of the river. So potentially, if he got all four of those relics, he's only got two. There's probably two more somewhere else. He had two. There's one on the front, right next to the walls. That. Just there. And maybe on the far right hand corner. And that's uh, gold. gold. Uh, I don't oh, actually. Just to the top there. Just next oh, to the yeah. Map. There it is. So, yeah. yeah so, four so. Relics. so, in theory, if this went to an incredibly long game, mm -hmm. if he just stalls out and gets to a trash war, he could maybe win around the two hour mark. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> get, if, he, if yeah. he took it to that point. But who really wants to do that? Um, unfortunately, though, for D8 Baby, that will be the end of his. Uh, 1v1 tournament he's eliminated in the round of 16 and viper will go through to the next round and uh we're not quite updated yet so uh, we'll go back into the game for a minute uh oh no uh, yeah there we go cool robo's just updating the overlays right now yeah. and we'll have information about our next game um if we show the uh, the schedule for today we will be able to see all of the games uh, we've actually got the max versus backed coming up next